Hey there guys, here we are going through the EdXL June 2018 Foundation GCSE Maths Paper 3. So this is the second calculated paper. As always, I'll stick useful stuff down below in the description, uh, such as other past papers, topics to help with this paper, and other past papers. Let's do this. Okay, question one wants us to write nine tenths as a decimal. If you don't know, put this into your calculator as a fraction, press equals, and then the SD button, and that will give us 0 0.9. Question two, 0 0.3 as a percentage. So to turn decimals into percentages, we multiply by a hundred, so we get 30%. Uh, question 3, we want to write the number 2538 to the nearest 100. So the 100 is the 5. We got a 3 after it. So the 5 stays down as a 5. So it's 2000. 500. Question 4. Uh, here are the first four terms of a sequence 2, 9, 16, 23. We want to write down the next term of the sequence. So the difference here between terms is 7. So to get from term to term, we are adding 7. 23 add 7 is 30. Part B, explain how you got your answer. We added 7. Part C wants us to work out the tenth term of the sequence. So we could just keep adding 7 until we get to the 10th term. Because it's good practice though, we're going to find the nth term expression for the sequence and then use that. So, we've got 2, 9, 16, 23, blah blah blah. So, to get from term to term, we're adding 7. That tells us our sequence is something to do with 7n. Now, if we set n equal to 1, we are then comparing it to the first term of the sequence. So, 7 times 1 would give us 7, but we need 2 as the first term. How do we get from 7 down to 2? we subtract 5. So the nth term is 7n minus 5. When n is equal to 10, we get 7 times 10 minus 5, which gives us 65. So, as I say, you could have just kept on adding 7 until you got to the 10th term. I just wanted to do that there. I just wanted to do that there because it's good practice. Okay, question 5. So we got 4 digits, 7, 3, 4 and 9. We want to use 3 of the digits to write down the largest possible three digit number. Mm -hmm. So we're going to need the biggest digit first. So that's nine. And then the next biggest, which is seven. And then the next biggest, which is four. 
974 is our guy. For 5B, we got four different digits. 8, 2, 1, 6. Uh, we want to put one of these digits in each box given uh, to give the smallest possible sum. So, to give the smallest possible sum, we need the two smallest numbers that we can make. So we need the smaller numbers in the tens column. So that's going to be one in there, two in there. And then it doesn't matter where the eight or the six go. So the smallest possible sum is 18 plus 26. Question 6 wants us to write all the factors of 30. So a good way to do this is in fact of pairs. So we got 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. And that's all of them. Question 7. David has twice as many cousins as Becky. Becky has twice as many cousins as Nishat. Nishat has six cousins. We want to work out how many cousins David has. So Becky has twice as many as Nishat. So 2 times 6, which is 12. David has twice as many as Becky. David has 2 times 12, which is 24. Question 8 wants us to use calculators to work out the value of the square root of 1.44 times 3.61. So just plonk that into your calculator as it's written and your answer is 2.28. Power P is a little bit trickier but the same job. We want to find the value of uh, 3.54 minus 0.96 all squared minus 4.096 again just plonk it in your calculator as it is uh, and you'll get 2.5604 good times okay question 9 we got part of a past time table from Bury to Manchester part A asks how many minutes should the 0825 from Bury take to get to Manchester? So, sure. the 0825 from Bury is this guy. It gets to Manchester at 9.05. Now, if you find time tricky, break it up. So, if we do 0825 to 08. 30, that's 5 minutes, if we then go from 8.30 to 9, that's 30 minutes, and then 9 to 9.05 is another 5 minutes. If we add all of those together, 5, 30 and 5 gives us 40 minutes. Cool. Okay, then for part B. Uh, Daniel goes from Whitefield to Manchester by bus. Daniel takes 17 minutes to walk from his house in Whitefield to the bus stop. He then takes 15 minutes to walk from the bus stop in Manchester to work. He needs to be at work by 10 a.m. He leaves his house at 8.45 a.m. 
doesn't get to work on time. So, first of all, we need to work out what time he gets to the bus stop in Whitefield. So, he leaves his house at 8.45. If we add 15 minutes onto that, we get 9 o'clock. Takes him 17 minutes. So add on another 2. He gets to the bus stop at 9.02. So that is the bus stop in Whitefield. So now we need to see what time bus he can get. Okay, so he's going from Whitefield. He can't get the 0834, but he can get the 904. So he's on this bus. That gets into Manchester at 9.35. So he gets into so he gets to Manchester at nine thirty five. It then takes him fifteen minutes to walk to work. So fifteen minutes after 9.35 is 9.50. So, does he get to work on time? Yes. He gets there 10 minutes early. Often 10, Bronwyn works at a restaurant. The table gives her rates of pay. So Monday to Friday, she gets £8.40 per hour. And at the weekend, she gets £11.20 per hour. Bronwyn worked a total of 20 hours last week. Uh, she worked 8 of these hours at the weekend. We want to show that she earned less than £200. Okay. So, 8 hours at the weekend. So, eight weekend hours would get her eight times eleven twenty. Now that is going to give us um, eighty-nine pounds sixty p. Now. She worked 20 hours in total, 8 hours around the weekend, that means 12 were during the week. So, 12 weekday hours is going to earn her 12 times 8 pound 40p. Now that's going to give us a uh, usual calculator to remember. 12 times 8 is 96. 12 times, so that's going to be a hundred pounds. And uh, 80p. So, her total earnings were 89.60 at £100 ATP. So that's going to give her £190 and 40p. Cool. Okay, question 11. Last year, the cost of a season ticket at a football club was £56. This year, the cost of a season ticket has increased to £60. We want to uh, write down the increase of the cost for a season ticket as a fraction of last year's price. 
for the fraction of last year's cost. So, the increase is £60 minus £56, which is £4. So, the increase as a fraction of last year's price is 4 over 56. Now, it doesn't ask for us to simplify that, uh, so that would be a fine answer, but it's good practice. So, there's a common factor of 2. So, this is 2 over 28. There's a common factor of 2 again. So it's 1 over 14. Cool. Okay, question 12. So we got a scale drawing of a tennis court. Now for this question, we would need to measure the length of the tennis court. So if you did this, the height is 5.8 centimetres and the length is 11.5. Now the scale is 1 to 200. That means 1 centimetre on the diagram represents 200 centimetres on the real tennis court. We want to work out the perimeter of the real tennis court, giving our answer in metres. So because this is a rectangle, we know the top is the same length as the bottom and the right is the same as the left. Okay, so if we work out first of all the perimeter in centimetres of our diagram, and then perimeter of Diagram is 2 times 11.5 add 2 times 5.8. Now that is going to give us 34.6 centimetres. Okay, so to turn that into the real tennis court, we know every one of those uh, centimetres is 200 centimetres on the real thing. So the perimeter of the tennis court well, that's going to be 200 times 34.6 centimetres and that's going to give us 6,920 centimetres now we want it in metres so divide that by 100 and we get 69.2 metres Okay, question 13, we got six straight line graphs. And in the table down here, we have three equations. We want to match the equation to the graph. So for the first one, y equals two, that is a straight line on which the y coordinate is always two, or the y value is always two. So that's going to be a horizontal line going through the y-axis at 2. So it's this guy here, graph D. Okay, then we want y equals x. So y equals x is uh, a graph with a positive gradient. Uh, we got a y-intercept of 0. Remember, general equation of a straight line, y 
equals m x plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y intercept. So y equals x has a y intercept of 0, a positive gradient moves us up from left to right. So the guy we're looking for is f. So we can see we're going through the point zero zero. We've also got this point up here, two two. So the y coordinate is exactly the same as the x coordinate. So it's f. Okay, and then for this bottom one, we might want to rearrange this to get it in the form y equals stuff on the right. So to move that x, we're going to subtract it. So we get y is equal to minus x plus 2. Now with this guy, we know we have a negative gradient. So we are going down from left to right. And we have a y-intercept of 2. So that is going to be graph A. So there's our y-intercept of 2. And we are going down from left to right. So that is A. Cool. Question 14. We got the scores for 20 people from a French test. We want to put them in a stem and leaf diagram, believe it or not. Okay, so, looking through the scores, we've got 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. So, on our stem, we're going to want 6, 7, 8, and 9. And now we need to put the units, digits, in order of size as the leaves. So, fun. Right, let's go through and find any zeros. So we got an 80, a 70, another 80, uh, another 70, so that's two 80s, two 70s, and that's it for all the zeros. So we got two 70s, two 80s. Okay, cross them out as we go. So, they all gone, they all gone, they all gone. And you're gone. Okay, now let's do the ones. So we got a 91, 71, and two 80 ones that we can see there. So let's put that in. So we got a 71, two 80 ones, and a 91. Okay, let's cross those out. You're gone. You're gone. You're gone. You're gone. Okay, that's it for the ones. Any twos? Uh, we got an 82 that we can see there. That's the only two. So we got an 82. So cross him out. Any threes? Nope, no threes. Okay, any fours? Well, we got a 64, we got a 94, and we got an 84. So we got a 64, 84, and a 94. Uh, 
Aún está... Eh, se va. You gone. You gone. And you gone. And he fires. So there's 175 to cross him out. And he sixes. Oops. Okay, so we got a 76. Uh, another 76. And that's it for all the sixes. You're gone. And you're gone. Okay, 7, so we got an 87, and a 67 over here. What a pain in the arse this question is. So, that's gone, that's gone. Okay, then we got a 77. Okay, so that's gone. Okay, so now we just got 69 and another 69, so that's it. Two more 69s. Good times. Okay, there's our stem and leaf diagram then. Awesome. Okay, on for part B. Uh, one of these students is going to be picked at random. The pass mark in the French test is 71. Omar writes... Uh, the probability that this student failed the French test is one quarter. Omar is wrong. Explain why. So, we need to know then how many people scored less than 71? So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 out of 20 scored less than 71. 6 twentieths is three tenths, not one quarter. That's why he's wrong. 15a. Jenny is asked to work out the value of 12 minus 2 times 4. We've got her working. 12 minus 2 times 4 is 10 times 4, which is 40. Jenny is wrong. We need to explain why. So, she's forgotten to use bitmass. So, she's not used bitmass. Multiplication comes before subtraction. So, she should have done... Um... I'll do the 2 times 4 first, so then it'll be 12 minus 8, which gives us 4. Okay, then for part B, uh, Ryan, maybe, is asked to find the range of these numbers, 3, 1, 8, 7 and 5. He has done range, is 5, minus 3. Which is 2. He is wrong. Explain why. So the range is biggest. Take smallest. So what he should have done is 8 minus 1, which is 7.
Okay, question 16. Alan, Bismar, and Chan share a sum of money. Alan gets one eighth of the money, Bismar gets one half of the money, Chan gets the rest of the money. Alan gets £2.50. We want to work out how much Bismar gets. So, we know two things about Alan. We know he gets one eighth. And we know he gets £2.50. So that tells us one eighth of the total is £2.50. So the total is uh, 8 times £2.50. Fifty, which is twenty pounds. So this bar gets half of twenty pounds, which is ten pounds. While we're here, we'll see how much Chan gets as well. So Chan gets whatever was left. So £10 and £2.50 is £12.50. 20 take £12.50 is £7.50. So Chan gets £7.50p. Okay, then part B wants us to find the ratio amount of money Alan gets to the amount of money Chan gets. Give our answer in the form 8P, where A and B are whole numbers. Okay, so we know Alan to Chan is 2.5 to 7.5. A few ways we could do this. We could turn both numbers into whole numbers by multiplying both sides by 2 so we would get 5 to 15 and then as a common factor of 5 on both sides so this is 1, 2, 3 cool in 17 so we got an isosceles right angle triangle with two side lengths of 3x we're told the area of the triangle is 162 centimetres squared and we want to work out the value of x. So, we can redraw the triangle so that it's sat on its base and probably looks a little bit friendlier. Okay, we know the area of a triangle is base times height all over 2. So here we get 3x times 3x all over 2, which is 9x squared over 2. So that is the area of the triangle in terms of x. Now we also know that the area is 162 centimetres squared. So what we can do here is form an equation in terms of x and then solve it. So we got the area algebraically uh, 9x squared over 2 and we have the area numerically so as a number it's 162 so this is the guy that we now need to solve so 9x squared over 2 means 9x squared divided by 2 so to move that to we need to multiply both sides by 2 So we get 9x squared 
is equal to 300 and um, I can do maths, 324. Okay, we then need to divide by the 9, which gives us x squared is 36. And then we square root and we get x is 6. Cool. Question 18, we want to work out the value of uh, 2.645 times 10 to the 9 over 1.15 times 10 cubed, giving our answer in standard form. So the first thing we want to do is put this guy into our calculator. So if you put it in like that, then we should get... Uh, 2,300,000. So, that is the answer, but it's not in standard form. So it's 2, 3, and then 5 zeros. Okay, so in standard form, well, standard form is always a single digit between 1 and 9, point anything you like after the decimal. So here we're going to need 2.3 <coughs> and it's times 10 to a certain power. So the power is how many places the decimal point would have to move to get from here to here. So it's gone one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's 2.3 times 10 to the 6. 19, the scatter diagram shows information about 12 girls. It shows the age of each girl and their best time to run 100 meters. So we've got their time up the side, age along the bottom. Part A asks us to uh, write down the type of correlation. Correlation is asking, or it describes, how the data is linked. So we can see here there's a general trend that the time decreases as the age increases. Our data is going down from left to right. This is a negative correlation. Tina is 11 years old. Her best time to run 100 meters is 12 seconds. The point representing this data would be an outlier. Explain why. So let's plot it, see what it looks like. So we want 11 along the bottom and then 12 up the side. So that is that point there. Now we can see that is really far away from the rest of the data. So it's definitely an outlier. So the reason we could say is, well, it doesn't fit with the other points. Anything like that. Okay, and then Debbie is 15 years old. Debbie says the scatter diagram shows it should take me less than 12 seconds to run 100 meters. Comment on what Debbie says. So, the oldest girl that we have data for is less than 14 years old. So 15 is out of range 
of this cat diagram. Times cannot keep decreasing, otherwise you're either the flash or you're teleporting or something. So there is going to be a limit to which the times can keep decreasing too. So we could say, well, 15 is out of the range. Uh, of the graph anything like that and you'd be fine ok question 20 wants us to expand and simplify 5 lots of p plus 3 minus 2 lots of 1 minus 2p so expanding means to multiply on the brackets so in this first guy 5 times p is 5p. Five, 5 times positive 3 is going to give us plus 15. Now in this second bracket, be careful because we've got a minus 2 on the outside. So minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 times minus 2p a negative times a negative gives a positive so we get plus 4p so that's the expanding done now we need to simplify which means to bring together like terms so in terms of p we got 5p add 4p so we got 9p and then we got uh, 15 minus 2. So that's plus 13. 21. So we got a trapezium drawn on a grid. Our mission is on the grid, draw a triangle equal in area to the trapezium. So we need to find the area of the trapezium. A little reminder. So if we top of a trapezium A, base B, and the height H, the area is the height times A plus B, all divided by 2. So here, this trapezium has a top length of 2, a base length, of 7 and the height of 4 so the area is 4 lots of 2 plus 7 all over 2 2 plus 7 is 9 4 times 9 is 36 divided by 2 is 18 centimeters squared. So we need a triangle that has an area of 18 centimeters squared. So remember the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So the easiest way that I would go for this is think of a rectangle with an area of 36 centimeters squared so that would be 4 by 9, or 6 by 6, and then half it diagonally. So I'm going to go for a triangle with a height of 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a base of 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then those up like that. In the real thing, use a ruler. To when a biased six sided dice is thrown once, the probability it will land on four is 0 0.65. The biased dice is thrown twice, 
Premier. Draws this probability tree diagram. Uh, the diagram is not correct. We want to write down two things that are wrong with the diagram. Okay, so let's take a look on the first branch. So he's got the probability of landing on a four is 0 0.65. That's right. He's then got the probability of not landing on a four is 0 0.25. That is the first thing wrong. Uh, so, for one, we could say 0 0.65 at 0 0.25 does not equal 1. Remember, probability always has to add up to 1. Okay, let's see if we can track down another. Okay, it's on this second branch. Oh, he's all of a sudden changed the probability of landing on a four. So why has he changed it from 0 0.65 to 0 0.35? So there's another problem. So on the second throw, The probabilities do not change. Go. Cool. Question 23. We got some Sokotoa, so I'll put my Sokotoa playlist down below. So we got a right angle triangle. We know uh, A, B. Is 11 centimeters, uh, BC is 7 centimeters, and we want to find the size of angle ABC. So, angle ABC is this guy, I'm going to call him theta. That means the base length, the base side is the adjacent, and the 11 centimeter side is the hypotenuse. So, now we go to SOC TOA to work out which trig function we want to use. So is it SO, S, O, H? No, K, C, A, H. Yes it is, because we got A and H. K tells us cos theta is in the adjacent so <coughs> sorry 7 over 11 now to get the value of theta we take the inverse cos of 7 over 11 so on your calculator press shift then cos put the fraction 7 over 11 in press equals so we get theta is the inverse cos 7 over 11. Now the question wants the answer to one decimal place. So we get 50.478 blah blah blah, which to one decimal place is 50.478. Five degrees. Cool. Okay, then for part B. Uh, the length of the side AB is reduced by one centimeter. Uh, the length of the side BC is still seven. Angle ACB is still ninety degrees. Will the value of cos a, B, C, increase or decrease, give a reason for your answer. Okay, so when it says the value of cos A, B, C, that means, uh, well, up here, cos A, B, C was 7 over 11. 
sure calls ABC was seven over eleven. If we change or reduce A B by one centimeter, A B is now hypotenuse. So that's now gonna be ten centimeters. So cos a, B, C is now going to be 7 over 10. So, cos A, B, C is now 7 over 10. 7 tenths is greater than 7 elevenths. So, it increases. Cool. Think four, we got quite a tricky probability question here. So, there are some counters in the bag. Classic. Uh, the counters are either red, white, blue, or yellow. Bob is going to take at random a counter from the bag. The table shows uh, each of the probabilities that the counter will be blue or yellow. There are 18 blue counters in the bag. The probability that the counter Bob takes will be red is twice the probability that it will be white. We want to work out uh, the number of red counters in the bag. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to work out here is the total number of counters in the bag. Now we know the probability of blue is 0 0.45. So the probability of blue is 0 0.45. What does this mean? This means 45% of the counters are blue. Now we know how many counters are blue. 18. So, 45% of total is, is equal to 18. From this, we can play reverse percentages to work out how many counters are in the bag in total. So, we want to turn 45% into 100%. A nice way to do this would be to first of all divide by 9 so if we divide by 9, we get 5% is equal to 2 counters. To then turn 5% into 100%, we multiply by 20. So 100% is equal to 40 counters. So there are 40 counters in the bag altogether. Okay, next, we need to think about the probabilities of red and white. So, we know probability has to add up to 1. So, the probability of blue and the probability of yellow, so let's say Probability of blue and probability of yellow, 0 0.45 and 0 0.25 is 0 0.7. That tells us that the probability of uh, red or white 
So the validity of red and white and it together. is 1 minus 0 0.7, which is 0 0.3. Now if we turn that into a percentage, we can say 30% are red or white. Now we know there are 30, no we don't, we know there are 40 counters all together. So we can find 30% of 40 is 12. So all together there are 12 red and white counters. We want to know how many of those are red. So remember we were also told the probability that the counter bulb takes will be red is twice the probability that it will be white. That tells us there are twice as many red counters as there are white counters. So red to white is 2 to 1. So we now need to split 12 into the ratio 2 to 1. So let's come over here where we got more room. So red to white, 2 to 1, and that's 2 counters all together. 2 add 1 is 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we multiply each side of the ratio by 4 and we get 8 to 4. So the answer is there are 8 red counters. Okay then for part B. A marble is going to be taken at random from a bag of marbles. The probability that the marble will be silver is 0 0.5. There must be an even number of marbles in the bag. Explain why. Well, 0 0.5 is one half. Of the, we cannot have half a marble. Uh, we can't have half a marble, which we would get if there was an odd number of marbles in the bag. So, the number has to be even, or you could just say we can't half an odd number. Question 25 wants us to solve uh, 5 minus x over 2 is equal to 2x minus 7. Okay, so quite a tricky one. The first thing we want to sort out is this fraction on the left. We don't want a fraction. Now this 2 is dividing everything on the left hand side. So this is 5 minus x, all divided by 2. So the first thing we need to do is multiply both sides by 2. So on the left, we are left with 5 minus x. And on the right, 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times minus 7 is minus 14. Okay, so that's got rid of the fraction. The next problem is that we've got an x term on both sides. Now, given that we've got a minus x on the left, 
we're going to want to move that. So to move a minus x, we add x to both sides. So that's going to leave us with 5 is equal to 5x minus 14. So starting to look a bit friendlier. We now need to get the 5x on its own. So to get rid of the 14, we or the minus 14, we add 14 to both sides. So we get 19 is equal to 5 x and then the last thing we need to do is get rid of that 5 that is saying 5 times x the opposite of multiplying by 5 is to divide by 5 okay so that's going to give us 19 over 5 is equal to x now that is a fine answer it didn't ask for it in any particular form as a decimal we could also say that x is 3.8 but 19 over 5 is fine 26 a nice 5 marker here so we got this pentagon a b c d e we know three angles we got a right angle which is 90 degrees uh, an angle of 115 degrees and an angle of 125. Now we are told angle B C D is two times angle A B C. So let's work out where these angles are first of all before we worry about anything else. So B C D is the angle formed when we go from B to C to D. So B, C, D is this chap down here and A, B, C is the angle made when we go from A to B to C. So that is this guy here. Now we're told angle B, C, D is 2 times angle ABC. So, what do we like to call things when we don't know what they are? X. So if we call angle ABC X, BCD is 2 times as big, so that's going to be 2X. Okay, alright, on with the question. So our mission is to work out the size of angle BCD and we must show our workings. Okay, so to be able to do this we need to know what the internal angles of a pentagon add up to. So you might know, you might not. If you don't, this is how we work it out. So if we just draw a pentagon like that the trick is to from one of the corners draw straight lines to any other corner that we can so let's go from the top so we can draw one like that and one like that now what we've done is split the pentagon into three triangles. Angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So we got 118 there, 118 there, 180 in there. So the sum of interior angles is Three times one eighty, which gives us 
540 degrees. So we know the five angles inside of this chap up here add together to 540 degrees. So we know then 90 add 115, add 125, add x, add 2x, is equal to 540. So let's sort out the left. 115, add 125, is 240, add the 90, is 330. So we get 330, add x, add 2x, is 3x, is equal to 540. Take away the 330, we get 3x, is equal to 210, and then divide by 3, x, is equal to 70 degrees. So, we wanted the size of BCD, which is 2x. So, BCD is 2x, which is 2 times 70 degrees, which is 100 and 14 degrees. Good times. Question 27. Triangles A, B, C and D, E, F are similar. That means the corresponding angles are the same. And we can see that D, E, F is the bigger of the two. So that means to get from the side lengths of A, B, C to D, E, F we multiply by a scale factor. So, part A wants us to find the length of DF. So, to be able to do this, we first will need to find the scale factor. So, to do that, the scale factor is the length of the big shape divided by the corresponding length of the small shape. So, we have two corresponding sides here, 8.4 on the small one, 12.6 on the big one. So we're going to do 12.6 divided by 8.4 and that's going to give us 1.5. So, to get from the lengths of the small triangle to the big one, we multiply by 1.5. To get from the big one to the small one, we divide by 1.5. So we want the F. So the corresponding side to the F is AC. So we're going to do 6.4 times the scale factor 1.5 and that's going to give us 9.6 centimetres. Part B wants us to work out the length CB. So CB is the base of the left hand triangle the corresponding length is 15 centimetres on the big triangle. So, this time we're going to do 15 divided by the scale factor. And that's going to give us 10 centimetres. Cool. Okay, 28, the final question. So we want to make G the subject of the formula T is equal to the square root of G plus 6 all over 2. 
So if we want to make G the subject, that means to get G all on its lonesome. So we've got quite a lot to do. First of all, the whole of the right hand side is being square rooted. Everything under that square root sign is trapped. So, what is the opposite of square rooting? Squaring. So our first step is to square both sides. So we're going to get t squared is equal to g plus 6 over 2. Okay. Now, on the right, g plus 6 is all being divided by 2. So to cancel out a division by 2, we multiply both sides by 2. So that's going to give us 2t squared is equal to g plus 6. And then there's one last thing to do. To get rid of the plus 6, we minus 6 from both sides. So we get 2t squared minus 6 is equal to g. And that is the final answer. Okay guys, that's the paper done. How have you found this one? Personally, I thought it was the most fiddly of the three papers. Certainly the one that took me the longest time to do. If you found this useful, please do give us a thumbs up, get subscribed, share with your friends, they might need help too. Um, at some point, the November papers will be here, so keep an eye out. If you have any requests, drop a comment. For now though, take it easy guys, take care.